Well, thanks, Jeff, uh, and thanks particularly for pointing out that this is the uh, first time the Corps has been given the opportunity to speak at the plenary session at the Army Science Conference. I just hope it's not our last. Uh, as Jeff said, I'm Major General Bo Temple, Lieutenant General Van Antwerp's uh, deputy, and I thank you for the opportunity to speak to you here today. And uh, good morning to uh, Minister Krug and other uh, distinguished uh, guests, our wounded warriors, and others here at the 27th Army Science Conference. I think conferences like this serve a great function, that is, bringing together the Army s and community to exchange information and promote collaboration in support of our warfighters and the nation. Today, I'd like to cover the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers mission organization, some of our challenges, and finally, how we are addressing them. Like the Army itself, we are not only facing uncertainty and complexity, but we also uh, provide direct support to the Department of Defense and the interagency in order to meet their engineering needs. Next slide. The Corps' vision mission and campaign plan goals helps to define what great looks like to us. We operationalize these concepts by how we're organized and funded. Next slide. For more than 200 years, the Corps of Engineers has proudly served our nation. In partnership with private industry, our work contributes to national security economic prosperity, the environment, and quality of life. In the center, you see our headquarters and divisions, which are direct funded, and also our 45 geographic districts, uh, all of which are project funded. Our major programs include civil works and military programs supported by real estate, homeland security, environmental, and research and development functions. In recent years, we have had an historic program. If we were a Fortune 500 company, we'd be about 50th on today's list. We are able to leverage the knowledge and capabilities of the 23,000 folks in the Civil Works program in support of military and emergency management operations at no cost to the Department of the Army and Department of Defense because its source of funds comes from a separate Civil Works budget. And underpinning all of our work is a robust $1.5 billion research and development capability, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Next slide. The Corps of Engineers is also a global organization. We provide technical support to over 100 countries, Mostly, mostly through reach back, and have a physical presence in over 30 countries. There are U.S. Army Corps of Engineers liaison officers at each combatant command in support of their theater security cooperation programs and engagements. Examples of our engagement with uh, other nations include the Pakistani uh, flood this past summer in the upper right of this slide, where we provided technical support to the Office of Security Cooperation, the Pakistani government, and the Asian Development Bank, and partnering with Brazilian engineers in the lower left uh, in the development of their national infrastructure. Additionally, we have over 1,200 U.S. Army Corps of Engineers personnel, most of them civilians, deployed in support of overseas contingency operations mostly in Iraq and Afghanistan, in support of construction and reconstruction efforts there. Like many other organizations, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers faces many challenges in support of our military and the nation. Next slide. The Corps is integral to the nation's security through our support to the Army and Department of Defense military construction programs and support to overseas contingency operations. We have many challenges in this area, but I will only cover a few uh, shown on this slide in the following 
uh, slides. Next slide, please. One challenge is the quick construction of expeditionary base camps for our deployed forces. In a world where asymmetric engagements uh, have been or have become the norm, the ability to reduce resource requirements to sustain expeditionary base camps will become increasingly more important. We need to do so while reducing risk, improving combat capability, operational mobility and flexibility, and better life cycle application of resources. Recent Center for Army Lessons Learned investigations and a TRADOC capabilities-based assessment indicate that base camps are still planned, designed, constructed, operated, and managed in an ad hoc manner. Base camps have not been addressed from a holistic systems approach. And as a result, they are still very dependent on external resupply efforts that place both soldiers and civilians at risk. Taking a systems approach to base camp planning, design, construction, operation and maintenance, and management will improve self-sufficiency self and sustainability, improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the base camp, and reduce risk and reduce resources needs such as for water, waste management, protection, and energy. These are challenges for the Army and for the Corps. Next slide. In support of this definition of capacity development from Lieutenant General retired Hank Hatch, a former Chief of Engineers, USACE has been involved in capability development for many years, typically in support of the COCOMs. However, as this need has grown and requirements become more sophisticated and urgent, we need better tools to address energy and water infrastructure, promote and sustain locally developed infrastructure, identify critical gaps and systems linkages, help donors, non-governmental organizations, and the interagency in support of host nations, and to respond more rapidly to these needs in the future. Next slide. It is vitally important that our soldiers hold the edge over all challengers in the area of geospatial awareness and information dominance. However, gathering or using the data necessary at the right level of detail to provide foundation data in a timely fashion in order to meet a more decentralized modus operandi remains a big challenge for us. So getting the right geospatial information at the right time and scale is critical even down to the individual soldier level. This, along with information technology advances and enhanced and improved sensor capabilities, makes it especially difficult to sort through, archive, analyze, and tailor all of this data in order to make it useful. We need better tools in this regard. Next slide. At home, our installations are our launch platforms for prepared and ready soldiers, units, and families. We have several challenges associated with keeping our installations environmentally sustainable and our facilities viable while maintaining combat readiness. The need to balance the environment and training requirements continues to grow. In the containment areas, we continue to address challenges associated with energy, construction, and infrastructure upgrades. We need better tools to plan for and sustain our installations. Next slide. And under our Civil Works program, we provide a wide range of water-related water capabilities in order to meet 
national and worldwide water challenges. We are, have responsibility for over $200 billion in national infrastructure, from dams to hydropower to inland waterways, levees, and our many recreation areas associated uh, with our reservoirs. It's hard to balance so many competing uh, priorities in an era of persistent conflict, and it's also a challenge to work with so many different partners in other federal, state, local, and non-governmental organizations as we try to address demographic shifts, climate change impacts, and changing demands for water and energy. We have to balance economic and environmental needs while reducing the risk of natural and man-made disasters to the American public. These challenges are not confined to our country alone, but also to the international community and, we're, and has a direct impact on military operations. Addressing these challenges requires a holistic systems approach supported by complex modeling, tempered with partner, stakeholder, and an increasingly sophisticated public input. These are truly complex, difficult problems, and some of them are on a, a grand scale. 